God's power is here. Tell your neighbor the anointing is here. You know, lift your hands again. Lift your hands and just close your eyes. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Let your cloud, let the wave of your presence sweep over this place. Every problem, I speak to every problem. I speak to every circumstance. I preach to every posture. I preach to it, Lord. And I ask your power to intervene. Let your word bring forth that power. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Right. Today I'm going to preach about Jesus. And um, Jesus, Jesus. Some weeks ago I was praying. And um, it was time for me to stop praying. And, um, you know, it was time was up. And I went into the bathroom and I was shaving. I was going to preach somewhere. I was actually in Manila. I was about to go and preach. And I heard the Holy Spirit telling me in an audible voice, learn of me. Learn of me. And so since then, I've been studying about Jesus. You know, Jesus said, I'm meek and lowly. Learn of me. And many times, we figure out stuff from all sorts of places. You know, pastors, we know how to go to other pastors to learn about a lot of things. <laughs> but we never take the time to learn from the greatest pastor who ever walked the earth, which is Jesus. And so I heard the voice, learn of me, Jesus. And um, uh, careful with people who hear voices, by the way, because the Bible says it takes two or three witnesses for a matter to be confirmed. And um, it was confirmed because I, I, I at our, this year's mountain of the Lord with our prophet, he, he said, I'm consumed with the spirit of Jesus. That was a confirmation of prophecy for me. So, I believe it's the greatest thing to learn from Jesus. And um, I want to thank Pastor Nanaya for inviting me, for having me. I want to thank Bishop Ogo for letting us use his church building. And um, I want to thank um, our prophet, Bishop Dakir Mills, for the privilege and the honor of being here. So, we're going to the book of John. John is amazing because John doesn't have many miracles. John and number two, I think John was focusing more on the words of Jesus and the conversations of Jesus than the miracles. But the ones he did, the miracles he did uh, show us and teach us about um, were powerful. Uh, he starts in John chapter one, uh, almost philosophically. Are you with me? You know, the Holy Spirit told me recently that when you are preaching, don't worry, because other people are listening than those who are here. It's okay. Yes. No, this is encouraging for me, in case you sleep. I'm about to preach a very powerful message. I tell you, very, very, I can't lie to you. Now, John chapter 1 starts with philosophy. In the beginning was the word, the word was God, where was God? Jump down to verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose, whose name, a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about John the Baptist. And then John the Baptist is asked the question, are you a prophet? Are you Elijah? Who are you? Are you the Christ? And I'm not the Christ, but I came to testify of the Christ. Which, again, is a quick lesson for you that both Jesus and John were asked the same question. Because when you really catch the anointing, people ask, that, are, you the, are you the same as that? So John comes all the way through. Um, we walk through the experience of the anointing. And John actually gives us insight into what he received in the wilderness. None of the Gospels teach us about the upcoming training of John. All we know is that he went into the wilderness. And this is the only place in scripture where it tells us what he was told in the wilderness. And he said, I was told that the one who told me to baptize, which is God. John met God the way Moses met God in the mountains, which is why he's one of the greatest prophets. And um, John says, I was told that the one who you see the spirit descending on and remaining because a lot of people have the spirit but it doesn't tarry. So he said, if you see the spirit remaining, that guy is the Christ. But that's beyond the scope of today's sermon. Oh. Then later on, the next day, John is with his disciples and he sees Jesus coming. Uh, well, actually, the day before, he sees Jesus coming and says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the, the sins of the world. The disciples still didn't get the message. So the next day, he repeats it again. Behold the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. And uh, two disciples understand the message, John and James. And no, Andrew, Andrew and John, I think. And then they go to follow uh, Jesus. Also in John 1, Peter is picked up along the way. If you remember, Philip brings his friend Nathaniel, who Jesus saw under the fig tree. And then Nathaniel says, um, 
can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then Jesus says, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you, which is a word of knowledge and a gift of a prophet. And then, as with all of us, prophecy excites all of us. And we say, wow. So Nathaniel said, now I believe. And he said, did you believe because of the word of knowledge, you shall see greater things than this? Then he says, you see the heavens open, the son of man with angels ascending and descending, and which was a confirmation of Jacob's vision when he saw a ladder between heaven and earth. And he was, Jesus was referring to himself as the ladder because Jacob saw God as a ladder because that's why when he woke up, he said, uh, God was here and I knew it not. But that's beyond the scope. So Jesus is ending John 1. I'm just walking you through to understand. He's ending John 1 by calling Nathaniel and Philip. He says, that shall see greater things than this. In John 2, he's forced to do a miracle by his mother um, in Galilee, in Cana of Galilee. And um, he, is, he is coerced into it and does it. And then from Galilee, he goes up to Jerusalem. People think Jesus went to Jerusalem once. He went a number of times. Because in John 2, he went to Jerusalem and whipped all the people in the um, temple. And it must have caused big news because in the very next chapter, a, se- a senior pastor came to see him at night and asked him, no man can do these things except God be with you. And that's Nicodemus in John chapter 3. So... We ended John chapter 3. We end John chapter 3 with a nobleman whose son is sick. And, he says, and the nobleman says to uh, Jesus, will you heal my son? And Jesus said, except you see miracles, you will not believe. And then the nobleman doesn't respond to that comment. And just says, still, my son is sick. He says, go home. He's made well. Loretta, stay with us. Be strong. Amen. Amen. John 4. Jesus is on his way to Judea sends away his disciples on a bogus at, uh, assignment to go and bring food which he will not eat because his real meat is to do the will of God and the real purpose is actually to send them away so he can have a long time with somebody he has already predetermined to have an assignment with that's John 4 all the way to the end, it's complex so that's a long story and that's it's, it's amazing John 4 is about the well of the thirsty the, 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 the well where thirsty people go to. And then today's sermon is John 5, which is the pool of the broken. So we pick up the story in John chapter 5. And um, John chapter 5, verse 1. And John always explains context, atmosphere, crowd, what was happening, who was there. John is intricate, he's, he's wonderful. And um, Luke gives us an outsider's perspective um, to the gospel, which is one of the reasons why he was accepted. Now, in John chapter 1, there was a feast of the Jews, which means there was a party going on. Uh, A feast, if you know, we have feasts in Ghana. We have Homo, we have Odriwa, Odriwa, Odriwa. Beautiful. I I don't speak your language and I have no apologies. Pardon? Abwatri. Very good. That's the catching of a deer. Yes, I remember that as well. And Hogba Chocho Za. Amen. So a similar feast was going on now. If you've been, are you with me? Yeah. At the back, are you alive? Good. If you've ever been to a feast uh, uh, in our part, in our people who like celebrating, the whole town is alive. The whole town is alive. There's music, there's noise. And then, and then, and then, God is doing something today. And then there's a, there's a hidden corner of Jerusalem. And I've been there. I've been to this corner of Jerusalem. You'll be there. Right next to the sheep gate. And these people are not involved in the party. And the whole world is celebrating and is happy. And is enjoying prosperity, food, music, and family. And there are this group of people who are not part of the feast. And Jesus goes directly to where there is no feast. I don't know which circumstance you are in your, in your life tonight. Maybe everybody else seems to be okay except you. But tonight, I came to prophesy to you that Jesus is walking directly to your circumstance. Jesus is not blind to our problems. Why are you standing? If you stand, you stand forever. We just start. This is verse 1. Verse 2. There is a Jerusalem. Now, this is, not John, this is now John stepping out of the story to explain context. The setting and the, the atmosphere. There is a Jerusalem. This, by the way, these are facts. These historic facts. By the sheep gate or the sheep market, a pool. So when you come through the sheep gate, literally, you just go straight to get to the pools of Bethesda. They're very deep. And there's no longer water in them. But in those days, there was water. 
and um, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, which means house of mercy. Having five porches. How many? Five. 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 Five porches. Five groups. Five teams. Five. Five of them. Five problems. Five types of people. Five is the number of grace, which is why when God started to create, he created everything for man by the fifth day. And on the sixth day, he made man to enjoy the five days. Five is the number of grace because Jesus Christ had five wounds. His hands, his feet, his head, his side, and his back. Five is the number of grace. Five types of problems. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Next verse. We were just reading through, then we go home. In these pools, in these porches, sorry, lay now, these are the five problems. Watch this. Watch this. Number one, impotent people. An impotent person is somebody who is powerless. He's impotent. He has no power. He cannot move. (laughs) He's just not powerful enough. Sometimes you are in love with a girl, but you are just not powerful enough. Sometimes you really need a job, but you are just not powerful enough. Sometimes you want to stop watching pornography, but you are just not powerful enough. Sometimes you want to tell him to take his hand off your breast, but you are just not powerful enough. 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 Sometimes you wish you could wake up at 1 a.m. to wait on God, but you are just not powerful enough. Impotent. 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 Is there anywhere in your life that lacks power? Then you are on one of these five porches. And Jesus is coming to you today. You know, when I was preparing to preach this, I I was preparing for a miracle service. Then the Lord told me, I didn't, I'm not only speaking to the sick. The Lord told me, minister to everybody. Pastors, is there a place in your ministry where you are just, you are just like, you are just not. It's not, it's not that you don't want to. It's not that you've not tried to. But you are just not powerful enough. Impotent. Impotent. I've been impotent many times in my life. I just didn't have the ability. The dynamics. The dynamics. I just couldn't. Everybody else could, but I couldn't. They'll say, just read. Just pray. Just work hard. Just, and the, and the, just, just stop it. Just end it. Just move on. Just leave her. Just leave him. Just end it. But the just, I, I'm just, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. So there they were. Divided into their problems. This is just the, how the church is. We are divided into our problems. Because if only the blind man would have sat on top of the halt man, they would have made it. But they are divided into five porches. The second porch is the porch of the blind. The visionless. The visionless. He wants to be rich, but he doesn't know how. He wants to make it in life, but he doesn't know how. He wants to get married, but he can't decide. He has no vision. He has no plan for his life. He doesn't know what he's doing next. He's finished university. He says he's going to do national service. After national service, he doesn't know what's coming next. And his life is just going around in circles. He has no vision. He says he's a pastor, but he has no vision for church. He has no, a vision is evidenced by running. Habakkuk tells us that when the vision is made plain, the young man runs. So when there's no activity and there's no action, there's actually no vision. I I can say that amongst young people, as a pastor of young people, the greatest sign of poverty is the lack of vision. People have no vision for their lives. Only fooling around, drinking, smoking, sleeping around, playing around, but there's no vision. You come to church and you, you dance or you sing or you play around and the rest of the week you just spend it at home waiting for the next weekend to come. And you have no vision and no plan for your life. It's a problem and it has a porch. It's a problem. Pastors without spiritual visions, not trying to achieve anything, not trying to get to any next step, not trying to become anything, but center leaders who are okay where they are, they have no vision. And they can't see it, so they just sit there by the porch. And everybody wants to be well, that's why they are there. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. 
I don't know if I'm still with you. Okay. The next group on the porch. The next group on the porch. Who's helping me? Job five. The halt. The halt. The halt. They can't move. They have a vision. They can't achieve it. He wants to finish school, but he can't. He's out. That's a vision. His vision is hundred. His vision is hundred. But he, 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 he can't move. He has printed it. It's in his Bible. It's all over his room. But he, he can't. He can't. They keep telling him how he has to develop different parts of his ministry, but he can't. They keep telling her that if she smiles and she's gentle, she'll get a good beloved. But she can't stop it. She can't change her character. They keep telling her that if she stops being moody and depressed and emotional, maybe she'll marry. But she can't. She's spoiling every good thing in her life. They keep telling her if you fight with your mother and your father, you'll be cursed. And he tries. But every time, he can't. He can't move. Maybe you don't belong to any of these porches. But me, I, I, I find myself. I find myself. Now, this is my favorite one. No, this is not my favorite. This is my second favorite. Withered. <laughs> the Greek word for withered is shrunken. A smaller version of what you should be. <laughs> I said, maybe somebody who's listening is blessed by what I'm saying, but. Have you ever been a smaller version of what you should be? By now, your bank account is a smaller version of what it should be. Your marriage is a smaller, less, lesser version of what it should be. You should have been happier by now. It's been only two years. But your marriage is horrible. And you smile in church. And you jump and you laugh and you're happy, but you are depressed inside. Should you not have been more spiritual by now? Five years of this? You've been, should you not be a pastor by now? Are you not a shrunken version and a reduced version of what you should be? You learn so hard for every exam. You know, life is hard. We learn hard and then when the results come, it's a smaller version of what it should have been. Hopeless. Five porches. Apostles. I hope I'm not off course. I hope I'm, I'm on, on scripture. Then there's the fifth porch. It's my favorite. These are the problems which cannot be named. They, they are just waiting for the movie. They, they, they couldn't. There are problems that cannot be said. There are problems which cannot be written. There are problems which cannot be explained. There are problems you can only smile about. Look, I tell you, I tell you, maybe, maybe you guys are not interested in the power of God. But I tell you, in my life, there are problems I can't write. There are problems I can't classify. There are issues I have I can't speak about. You don't know. Waiting for the moon. It's a fifth porch. It's just empty. Are you blind, out, withered, important? No. This way. This way. My problem is bigger than what you think. I can't fit into any of these groups. Some of you here, you have problems that don't fit in here. Your problem is deep. It's from your family. It's from your background. It's from your upbringing. It's from where you come from. It's from your mind. It's from your temperament. Outside you are okay, but inside you are dead. Some of you are here. You lie on your bed and you look at your ceiling. And you ask yourself, if it's you, this is not what you expected to be. But here you are. You're not with it. You're not hot. You're not blind. But you have a problem. You have a problem. You have a problem. You know, I'm sure each, each porch was laughing at the other porch. <laughs> Shall I wear your eyes there? Hey, you know the fissy. You know the fissy? Okay, then they'll shout to the blind. You two, welcome. 
<laughs> the blind man too shall you to walk walk up everybody everybody will be perfect in one porch but when you when you go to your porch you see that there are problems there and so I just want to tell you there's no one in this room who is not on one of these porches today and you know this is going to blow your mind you see what you are waiting for is the process which you've been told and taught since you were born there's a process next verse this is the process at certain seasons an angel comes into the pool and he troubles the waters whosoever then first here's the process first uh, Holy Spirit these are the rules these are the steps these are the steps this is what you've been told stepped in was made whole of what, what, whatever whatever problem he had whatsoever disease if he could make it there are three problems here number one you need to be fast number two you have to be on time because only for a certain season and number three you have to be strong you have to be very strong you have to be strong enough to overcome the, the stampede and only one and you know one person is enough to keep you going every once in a while somebody's church works so you feel that yours will work soon every once in a while somebody's marriage works so you feel like yours is about to work and so it keeps you going and so like the man you can go to the next verse he has been there for 38 years and the reason you give yourself for being in the problem you are being in is because you've not been able to stick to the process which you've already been taught since you were a child you've been told if you are going to prosper you have to learn hard and you have to get a first class degree and the reason why you are suffering is because you couldn't learn hard and you couldn't make it into the pool first and you do you know how hard it is to be first have you run 400 before have you run 400 before very hard to be first. Very hard to be the most holy. It's hard. And so, when I ask you, why is the church not working? You give me the good reason, but inside you give yourself the other, the other reason. The other reason. When I ask you, why is your Christianity not working? You have a secret reason why. When I ask you, why is your job not working? You tell me that it's because the people don't want to promote you, but you, you tell yourself it's because you went late. Because we've given ourselves in humanity processes. You have to read, pray, follow, and then you'll be anointed. And if you if you if you're not anointed, it's because you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't do. There are steps to the anointing. Steps. And so I'm almost done. And so there's a certain man. Now this, you know, I'm so blessed by this. I, I I'm struggling to share. Because I don't think you're understanding me. But I'm, keep, I'm going to keep on going to the end. A certain man was there which had an infirmity. 38 years. 38 years on the porch. 38 years of watching different people receiving their breakthrough. 38 years of waiting for God to move. 38 years of waiting to make it. To break through. Then Jesus saw him lie. Jesus walks in. This is what bugs every preacher I've ever heard preaching this. Why did Jesus go to that man? Many schools of thought. One of the schools of thought is that he noticed him. And that when you notice somebody, it means God is about to bless the person. I accept that. That's fine. Another school of thought is that God gave him a, a word of knowledge. Because the Bible says he knew he had been there a long time. So when you receive word of knowledge about somebody, it means. But this morning, this morning, I was thinking about this verse. And I realized that I have another school of thought. Verse 7. This, by the way. I have no man. When the water is troubled... To put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. I never realized he's been trying for 38 years to, to be between the porch and the pool. Some people on the porch have given up. 
Some people say that it's never going to change. This is how my life is always going to be. But for 38 years, this guy has been trying to be spiritual, trying to be holy, trying to follow God, trying to make it, trying to be good, trying to do what he has to do. For 38 years, he has been between the porch and the pool. When he's about to, he's always in between. Some people are only on the porch. But he makes the effort to try. He's trying. And so Jesus looks at maybe a thousand sick people and he walks to the guy who is always between the porch the pool. Porch and the pool. Well, I don't know if I'm, I've lost you. Are you there? Okay. Now Jesus asked him a question which will surprise you. Do you want to be made whole? Verse 6. Do you want to be made whole? After all these years. And that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Because some people have given up. Some people don't care anymore. Some of you have accepted how you are. Some of you are not saved. You are not Christians. And you've accepted it. You don't, you're not, you don't even try to save God. But there are some people who have given it. They failed for 38 years. And they are still trying. Our whole lives are spent fighting for something that's not real. Waiting for an angel to move. Angels are powerful. Hebrews 1.14 tells us that they are ministering spirits sent to help those who will be heirs of salvation. Ministering spirits. Yes, but an angel is not the son of God. And so the son of God breaks all processes. No more steps. Look, tonight... The, the Lord, the Lord told me to break chains. That's the word I got. Break chains, break cycles. I'm not talking about entering a process. I'm talking about breaking a cycle. Breaking a cycle. Break the cycle. So Jesus said, Do you want to be made whole? Which is a stupid question to ask to a human mind. But you'd be surprised that a lot of people don't want it anymore. A lot of people don't want it. But I came to prophesy to you. You know, even if it's five people, if you are here and you've been stuck in the mud for a long time, whether people know or they don't know, you've been stuck in a cycle for a long time. I have one question for you. Tonight is the night. Jesus is here tonight. Jesus is here tonight. If I be a man of God, the power of God is here tonight. And there's one question. Will thou be made whole? Do you want it? Are you tired of the 38 years? Are you tired of the cycles? Tonight is the night. The man comes with an excuse. I wasn't able to make it. My first excuse is, I don't have any connection. No man can help me. I would have got a job if I had a connection. I would have been better if I had a shepherd. If somebody would have given me money, things would have turned out differently. If my mother was alive and if my father had stayed at home, things would be different. I don't know any man. Nobody has helped me and nobody has reached out to me. Number two, I'm still forcing, but every time I'm about to go, somebody walks over me and gets in before me. Wherever man failed you, that's why I came. That, that's the only reason why I came today. Wherever man has failed you, and the arm of flesh has been too short, tonight, whatever it is under the anointing, I declare over your life that this is your time. This is your time. Anointing is here. Anointing is here. And then. You know Jesus' response? Even worse. Jesus is socially unacceptable to make this statement <laughs> to a paralyzed man. Rise up. It's an insult. It's, imagine a beggar on the road paralyzed in a wheelchair. You open your door and say, get up. Get up. Do you think it's just? What is not just for you is just for God. 
what is not just for you in a moment tonight by the time you go home your life will be changed tonight by the time your head hits the pillow your life would have turned around tonight by the time you close your eyes your life would have transformed what is not just for you look what is not just for you whatever part of your body is sick what is not just for you God's power will touch tonight and immediately, the Bible always says immediately, immediately, whenever Jesus heals, it's immediate. If I was healing it would take some time, but whenever Jesus heals it's immediately. And then it's the confusing part. He told him verse 8, he told him verse 8, verse 8, verse 8, he told him rise up take your bed Take your bed. I would have liked to leave my bed. That's been the biggest problem of my life. And leave it for other people in my porch who may need a bed. Take your bed. Because what Jesus was saying is what you used to carry, what used, what used to carry you, you are now carrying. And he was saying that no matter how much God blesses you, you have to carry your testimony. You know, some people don't want anyone to know who they were. Some people don't want anyone to know where God brought them from. But we carry our beds because no matter how saved you get, there's still a little bit of who you used to be left. No matter how powerful you become, there's still a little bit of But you carry it to show that you're not the person you used to be. And that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. And that all things have passed away. And you can look at my bed to remember where I used to lie and how I used to be. But the power of God touched my life. And they used to carry me, but now I'm carrying it. They used to carry me, but now I'm carrying it. I saw, I, I, I speak about fornication because it used to carry me, but now I'm carrying it. I speak about drugs because it used to carry me, but now I carry it. I speak about alcohol because it used to carry me, but now I'm carrying it. I speak about illicit relationships because they used to carry me, but now I'm carrying them. I speak about doubts and fears because they used to carry me. I speak about homosexuality because there was a time I couldn't get out of the bed, but now I carry it. And yes, I still have my scars, but God brought me through. Take your bed and walk don't leave your bed behind. Pastors, don't leave your bed behind. I, I talk about my bed. I talk about my bed. Paul said I was, I, was, I was injurious. I was injurious to the church. I was a killer. But when God chose me, some of the most beautiful passages of scripture in I think 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I think from verse 19, and he talks about how God has given him the ministry of reconciliation and now he has become an ambassador, ambassador of the message and he doesn't, he doesn't shy from the fact that he was once a sinner. Then he goes on to say that he who knew no sin became sin that we might be the righteousness of God. That's, 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 that's who you are. Take your bed. Take your bed. Take your bed. So when you're going home, people will say, it's you. You used to lie in that bed. Mm. Yes, this is my bed. This is my bed. I have a bed. This is my bed. I have a 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 bed. To wait that God was reconciling the, cells, the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word <laughs> of reconciliation. Verse 20, verse 20, verse 20. This is one of my most favorite passages in the world. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Verse 21, one of my favorite verses. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Ah. The love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. When the world was having a feast, he went to the one person with the problem. The love of Jesus. When there were a thousand sinners, he chose one. You know, take me back to John 5. John 5. Let's continue. Finally, I'm closing. Finally, the last message I have for you. The man took his bed and walked. Are you with me? He took his bed. There's nine. He rose up, he took his bed. And he started rejoicing. 
rejoicing. He could now walk. After 38, I mean, how old was he when he went to the porch? Even if he was 10, he's now 48 years old. Imagine the jubilation. Where are you going? Where are you going? Verse, where are you taking me? Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. And immediately the man was made all, took up his bed and walked. And the same day was the Sabbath. The same day was the Sabbath. Jesus was a Sabbath man. He even said, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. But that's, that's another message. Verse 10. Verse 10. Jesus is a Sunday man. Verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. They were going back to the laws. They're going back to the processes. No, I keep telling you, you don't deserve it, but God is going to touch your life. You don't deserve it, but God is healing you. You don't deserve it, but God is anointing you. You don't deserve it, but God is breaking every chain. You don't deserve it, but the prison walls are coming down from around you. You don't deserve it, but God is moving. God is moving. It's against the law. God is moving. Verse 11. Then he answered, He that has made me whole, the same said unto me, take up your bed. And w- what instruction has the one who made you whole given you? You know, when Jesus saved me, when Jesus saved me, he called me. He called me. That's why I'm in the ministry. Because the one who made me whole said to me, feed my sheep. What, what has he told you? Since God saved you and changed your life, what has he told you to do? What instruction has he given you? What instruction he said? The only thing he told me to do was to carry my... He, he didn't even speak to Jesus. So he, he took the bed and walked away. In joy, forgetting to even say thank you. All I know is this is what he told me. Whatever he says to you, do it. God will not only save you and transform your life, he also gives you an instruction. Not many, not many, not complex, but be careful. God is the one who gave you that marriage, be careful. God is the one who gave you that job, be careful. God is the one who healed you. God is the one who washed your sins away. God is the one who saved you. That's why Paul says, I, I, he who has saved us and called us with the holy calling. There's always something attached to it. Verse 12. Verse 12 ending. Do you sense the power of God? After this there was a feast of the Jews. Where are you? Where are you taking me to? Verse 12. Who is upstairs? Verse 12. Who is upstairs? Verse 12. John 5 verse 12. Then they asked him who is the guy? Who told you take up thy bed and walk? Now watch this. Next verse. He didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't know who. This is one of the most shocking bits of scripture. The guy didn't know who it was that healed him. Just because somebody doesn't know Jesus <laughs> doesn't mean Jesus cannot bless, transform, touch, and heal the person. Yes. I know, I know it doesn't agree with your theology, but you'd be surprised. That's why David said, when I made my bed in hell, your presence was with me. What you don't know is when you were drunk, there were angels around you. What you don't know is that when you were, you were sleeping from boy to boy, God's presence was watching you. What you don't know is when you were drunk at the age of 16, the presence of God was surrounding you and God was looking for you. Where can I go from your presence? If I deceive, if I make my bed in hell, still your presence. What you don't know is that God has been following you. God so loved the world that He pursued the world by sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He's pursuing you. What you don't know is God loves you. The love of God. That's why we can never know God until we know His love. God is love. God, not not what we call love. And so God, you, you think you don't know God, so God couldn't have brought you here tonight, but you'd be surprised. You think you don't have a relationship with God, so all this whole message is not for you. You'd be surprised. You think you've not prayed a word in the last 10 years, but you'd be surprised that even when you lay your bed in hell, God can follow you to stand with you in hell. You'd be surprised. 
and he that was healed wist not who it was he that was touched wist not who it was he that was brought to church wist not who it was but Jesus conveyed himself aware a multitude being in that place 14 this, this is one of the most confusing parts of scripture afterward now Paul if I was Jesus' manager managing his brand I explained to him we have three years we have to save the world the whole world will be transformed by your visit we have to concentrate on the important things you've done enough for this guy you healed him there's a feast this is our best time to do our publicity this guy is not going to be an apostle or a disciple he's not going to help the message he's not going to help the ministry you've healed him it's enough we didn't even ask his name we don't even need that guy but Jesus says no I'm going to find ah, it would have been okay it would have been okay if he just healed him I'm going to search and find the guy because I have I have a more important message for him than his healing at the pool this is the message behold you are made whole and he tells him sin no more now Jesus says forget about the fact that you couldn't walk forget about the fact that you were sick forget about the fact that you are broke forget about the fact that you don't have a job forget about your big earthly problem which has made you all stand to your feet waiting to receive something from God forget about all of that because if you continue in sin something worse something worse than 38 years oh I don't know if you are with me something worse than 38 years immobile, unable to walk unable to see, unable to move there is something worse than that and that thing that is worse is, called, is caused by sin and it's called hell it's called hell it's called hell a wicked pastor will heal your infirmity and not talk about your sin so Jesus said it's not enough that I healed him that will only solve his problem for the next 40 years I have to find him I have to find that guy and tell him you better watch out for sin 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 better watch out for your sins better watch out for your problems better watch out for your problems a bad degree will give you a bad job but sin will give you a terrible eternity better watch out for your sins there's something I came to announce to you today there's something worse than being paralyzed jobless and broke for 38 years and it's called sin something worse something worse something worse something worse something worse my brother my sister when you die you still have a problem Jesus is solving many problems tonight but more will come and until the day we enter into glory when the scripture tells us there will be no tears no more pain no more sorrow for the former things will be passed and the son of God will declare behold I make all things new until that day we jump from problem to problem and the power of God helps us to overcome and to survive but the greatest miracle is for your sins your sins your sins your sins to be washed away sometimes when I drive through Accra I remember the scripture that says heaven and earth will pass away and I can't believe it Accra Mall Villaggio, the airport Osu, the streets, the buildings to be crashed the cars, the houses, the properties, the money, the banks, the government buildings, the state house, they'll be crashed and smashed. And everything that is so wonderful here will be smashed. The porches will be broken. The pool will be emptied and destroyed and the whole world will pass. And the things that God said are the only things that will stand. When you die, are you ready to go to heaven? The love of Jesus. He looked for him in the temple. Many people in the temple don't know Jesus. Many people in the temple don't know Jesus. Many people in church don't know Jesus. I'm so consumed with the love of Jesus. You know, he says, Paul says, that you may know the length and the breadth and be full of the love of God, that you may know the fullness of God. 
Without knowing the love of God, you can't receive the fullness of God. God is love. God is love. God loves you so much. God loves you so much. You, he loves you so much. You never know. Sin no more. Lest the worst thing come unto thee. Lest the worst thing come unto thee. And then, in my final verse, if I was preaching about others, the next verse would have been the most important verse. Because the Bible says in the next verse, the man departed and told the Jews, it was Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. Tonight, you are going home with these three words. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. When you can't make it to the pool, when your strength can't take you to the pool, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. It's not me. You know, you will never know how man a man is. It was Jesus. I've stood to preach many times. And the atmosphere was charged to the power of God. I've preached and while I preached, deaf ears were open. Twisted legs were straightened. Lumps and breasts disappeared. But it wasn't me. It was Jesus. By the time we go home tonight, your touch would have been confirmed. But don't tell them it was a powerful service with Pastor Joshua. Tell them it was Jesus. Some of you came here with sicknesses, with pain. Even as I minister now, the power of God is present and your bodies are being touched. Some of you came with a pain and the pain has lifted. I hear even in the spirit an abdominal, an abdominal abnormality is being healed. I hear in the spirit problems in the abdomen are being touched and healed. I hear in the spirit problems in the neck. I hear problems in the neck are being healed. I hear somebody's mother who has high blood pressure tonight is being healed. Somebody's mother back home is being healed. And God is sending his word and healing those at home. But I'm just reminding you as we walk into the presence and as we experience the power and the, and the healing touch, remember that it's not me. I haven't prayed enough. I'm not holy enough. I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not heavenly enough. Remember, it was Jesus. nobody like Jesus there was nobody like Jesus and he walked to the man and told him rise up rise up rise up do what you couldn't do do what you couldn't do this is the word of the Lord to you this evening do what you couldn't do it's gonna work do what you couldn't do do what you couldn't do do what you couldn't do Go where you couldn't go. Say what you couldn't say. Do what you couldn't do. Achieve what you couldn't achieve. Build what you couldn't build. Do what you could not do. It is Jesus. It's not me. It's not me. It's Jesus. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. It is Jesus. When a man walks with Jesus, nothing is impossible. Nothing is hopeless. Nothing has ended. Nothing is over. It is Jesus. I am a pastor. I'm telling you, I'm a pastor. I'm telling you, it is not me. It is Jesus. I am a pastor. I'm telling you, I fail all the time. And all I can say is at the end of the day, it is Jesus. If your ministry is going to work, it's Jesus. If your marriage is going to work, it's Jesus. If your life is going to work out, it's Jesus. But above all, above all, all those things are nonsense, above all. If you're going to make it to heaven, it's Jesus. You deserve the glory. Nobody move. And the honor, Lord, we lift our hands and worship. No walking around. 
No walking around. You deserve the glory. Stand to your feet, please. Lift your hands and sing it. And the honor. It's Jesus. Don't look at me. It's Jesus. Don't look at anyone. It's Jesus. But we lift our hands and worship. As we bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. Lift your hands and sing it. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. sick in your body, I want you to come to the front. If you're sick in your body, I want you to come to the front. Anybody at all, come. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus becomes more real than your sickness. You've received your healing. Jesus is real. Forget about yourself and focus on Jesus. And his blood every sickness I command every infirmity I command every weakness I command every disease to be loose from these bodies in the name of Jesus I speak to every pain every swelling every infection every inflammation I speak to problems in the bone I speak to problems in the joints I speak to problems in the stomach I sense your presence Jesus I command all these spirits and all these sicknesses to come out of their bodies in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name I thank you Satan your hand is broken I command the hand of bondage to be broken I command every chain to be broken I command every life to be healed in the name of Jesus Wherever there was pain, Lord, I command healing. It is Jesus. Jesus, heal your people. Touch your people. Touch your people. Ha! 
have compassion on your people. I give you all the praise, Lord. I give you all the praise. You are a great healer. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Where we are weak, you are strong. When we cannot make it to the pool, oh God, you are right there with us. I thank you. I thank you. I pray for mercy, Lord. Have mercy on your people. Forgive your people. Forgive your people and have mercy. Have mercy, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus. Have mercy. Thank you that they are healed now. Instantly. Right now. I thank you that it is done. Thank you that it is finished. Thank you that it is completed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you. Lift your hands and thank you. Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Thank him. Thank him that's already done. Thank him in faith. Speak out of faith and thank him. In my soul. Power of God is here. Power of God is here. and begin to check yourselves. I need to pray for another group. Check yourselves. Many of you have been healed. As I walked past some of you, I heard the Lord telling me He had touched your bodies. So begin to check yourselves. Now I want to pray for all those that are stuck in bondage camp. Something is holding you back. Stuck in chains. Stuck in bondage. Come. Come. Something is holding. Something is tied on your leg. You're not moving forward. Those of you who I pray for who are sick, I, I really sense the healing anointing in a stronger way than I have for a long time. If God has touched you, you've been healed, check yourself, do what you couldn't do. You can sense the pain is gone, you feel better. Right now, not that you are believing God, but right now you can sense that the pain is gone. You have to give your testimony. And if you are like that, go to my right, right hand side. You, I prayed for you, the sick people I prayed for, God has healed you. Can you see where Pastor Paul is? Go to him, don't join this group, go to where he's waving right there. God has touched you. God has healed you. Go with him all the way. Pastor Paul, let them sit on that side. No, no, on the chair. Sit down. Lead them. God has touched you. You have been healed. Come out. There are more. So many of you are healed. I sense the power of God. Please go right where he is. And sit, sit. Sit down. On them, sit down. Yes. those of you in front. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Kalia tiponi anana machi pruda kazi akata banana. Frikale bani atono muninchi gezovo. Pramina nanana kito koso folo damia nikosi. Lift your hands, receive the Holy Spirit. There's a wind here, receive the Holy Ghost. Ha, there's a wind here, receive it. The power is here. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the power. Receive. Receive. Yes, yes. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Ashes, be attentive. God is touching some people. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Careful. Watch it. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Yes, 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 yes. God is touching you. God is touching you. Jesus. 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 Lift your hands. You don't even need me to touch you. His power is here already. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive the anointing. Yes. Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. End the cycle. Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. The cycle. Lift your hands and receive. Don't be in the flesh. 
Receive. Receive the power of God. It's Jesus. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit. God is all over you. Move, move these ones over. Ashes. Move these ones to me. Lift your hands. Oh, Jesus. I sense the power of God. I sense the power of God. Are you ready? Three. of addiction, every chain of poverty, every chain of sin, every chain of pain, every curse. I plead the blood of Jesus. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. The power of God is here. Lift your hands. Lift your hands, lift your hands all over this place, lift your hands. Yes, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Lift your hands and receive. Congregation, receive the power of God where you stand. Receive it. It's over. Pick them up, bring them to me. Pick them up, bring them to me. Ah, receive it. Jesus, Satan, your plan is cancelled. Brings 
Jesus, I break that chain. I break that chain. I break that chain. I break that chain. I end that power in the name of Jesus. I thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. 